So how would you describe a typical viewing experience or, or exhibition at the funnel? What type of people would go to the screenings and um, their demographics? Uh, there's no exactly typical screening at the funnel, but I can describe a couple of the kind of events that you might have when you enter the funnel. Um, one is like um, the filmmaker Willem Tedder made these really long, really abstract color experiment films. It basically involved a lot of hand processing and manipulation of the footage to create a kind of colorized effect, if memory serves me. Anyway, the other thing that was distinctive about Willem's work was it was quite long. So you would sit and watch, you know, one or several of Willem Tedder's films, and it would be relatively silent or the very sort of um, abstract soundtrack, and you would be there for like a couple hours of just watching something that I don't think, you know, I now will show a film like Michael Snow's Wavelength to my students at OCAD University, and that's a 45 minute film consisting of one Zoom in an apartment. You can just see students like just cringing after the first 10 minutes. It's like you're pulling their fingernails out. They can't believe that we're actually expecting them to sit there and do this for 45 minutes to watch this very consistent image with just small variations in its predictability. Same with like Warhol films or something, you know, really, really long. So how do we do it? How do we manage to watch these like endurance tests of abstract film? And it has to do with a certain kind of headspace, I think. Um, it involves being able to kind of drift in and out of the image. Right? It's a kind of a temporality where you're sort of attending to it and then you're pulling away from it and to your own thoughts or reflecting on other things and then you're going back into it and it is of its time. If you watch even like a TV show from the early 80s, you'll be shocked at like the other day my daughter, this is a complete digression, but the other day she was playing the movie Commando, which is this like Arnold Schwarzenegger vehicle and it seemed like slow motion, right? It's like a hyper action movie of its time and yet you have a long scene of a truck, you know, driving up to and somebody getting out of the car and walking up to the door and you're thinking like, how could they cut that way? So uh, it is a difference in our, uh, the sheer velocity of the image. Um, but it's also a matter, so okay, we would be an audience of maybe 20, 30 people at tops, right, sometimes. It would usually, there's like two screenings a week, if I remember, it's like Wednesday and Friday, and then sometimes there'd be some event on Saturday or something. And so we'd be there for the screenings, and then we'd go out for drinks, there's this bar nearby afterwards, the kind of a country type, you know, just ordinary beer can bar. Off we'd all go, and we'd discuss the movie or something else, and just that would be it, right? That was a typical event. Unless there was like like an installation, in which case then, you know, there would be uh, more going on in the gallery. But basically, yeah, that's what it, that's what a typical screening would be like. Uh, another example, though, would be the Jack Smith performance that I mentioned earlier, which was a participatory performance where kind of everybody was drawn into becoming um, kind of actors in the spectacle that Jack Smith was creating. Um, they were the film, in a way. Um, I don't know if anybody actually filmed it. Somebody must have. But like it went on and on for days. Uh, David McIntosh should be the person to talk to about that because he set up that event. But um, it was, uh, um, you know, people were eating there. They were hanging around. They were dressed in Arabian costumes and I don't know what togas or like whatever it is. Like had things. Um, and uh, half naked, lolling on step ladders, and, and that was kind of the performance. There wasn't really, there was sometimes somebody would play some drums or something, but it was like kind of a happening performative collaboration. Mm. That would be another example. And is that sort of participatory experience, would that be rare for the funnel, or is that, were there sort of several such instances of that? Well, of a more common kind of user generated experience would be the, uh, the, kind of bring your own film night, and those were very common. Um, an example would be at the beginning of every season, uh, 
the entire membership would get like one roll of Super 8 film, right? And then everybody had to make a movie and bring it back and that would be the screening. I remember this one time, like, I was like so behind schedule that my movie consisted of filming my mother driving me out to Kodak because you had to deliver the film, like it had to get to Kodak, you know, on time. If it wasn't on time, then you wouldn't have it processed. And so she's like, put that thing down, I can't concentrate, I'm like driving, and oh, I'm on the wrong way, I'm on the one way. Like anyway, you know, it's just like stuff. Um, and uh, uh, then all these, so you would go, partly because you were curious to see how everybody would react to your film, you know, but you would also be curious to see um, what else they were doing. It was like a big assignment in school or something that everyone was showing. Um, and that kind of user-generated con uh, content was more common because Pretty much anybody who was a member of the funnel would find their opportunities during the course of the year to have their work screened and to, you know, get feedback. Yeah. Hmm. And, sorry, was it like a regular, a steady sort of group of people that came every week or would you get sort of first timers? Oh yeah, yeah, there's like, I mean, the funnel had its core. I mean, beyond the, like, for example, some people who are on the board of directors of the funnel, I swear to God, hardly ever came. Mm -hmm. They would curate sort of special, special, high-end Michael Snow events or something new, <laughs> and they would come to them. But then, then the rest of the time, it was just the usual schmoes. There was like Willem Tutter, there was me, there was Anna Grano, there was like Michelle McLean, there was David McLean. I could probably, you know, um, Ross McLaren, uh, I, you know, I could probably name the people, like, if I had to on like, and there'd be like 20 of them that were sort of always there, the Andersons, Jim and Dave, and you know, I just have to kind of remember, but it was, so yes, there was definitely a core, uh, Martha Davis, oh god, they're all coming back to me, <laughs> there was a core, and then um, Peter Chapman, and, and <laughs> I feel like they don't know, I'm going to leave somebody out, John, Jim, uh, John Porter, of course, right, who is, you know, they, you almost, don't need to talk to anybody because John remembers everything, but uh, and has everything probably too. But um, yeah, there was definitely a core. That said, uh, some of the people that we invited were international art stars, so of course there would be a big turnout for them. Mm -hmm. um, and others were, um, you know, from different stakeholders in the community, and then that would attract a different group. Hmm.